It's a win-win situation for you every single time. Why? Because you have dual purpose. There's dual purpose in every little action you take. You know, I think a lot of moment, I mean, you and I both, I'm pretty sure every agent thinks of momentum as a very important cause. When did you start realizing that you had that long-term momentum in you? Um, at when I lost everything. Like the reason I lost everything was because of short-term mentality, right? Everything was just get the deal now, do the deal now, flip the property now. I wasn't really thinking like I, I acquired so much debt because I was flipping properties and then I would borrow more money to flip more properties. I would roll that money into, into borrowing more money to flip more properties and you can only go so far and then when the whole house of cards falls, you know, and doing it like that, you aren't really thinking about the future. You're just thinking about now. And so when I lost everything, I realized two things. One, I have to create relationships and actually build a, a database and a brand and, and a business, right? That's the only way to withstand a market crash is to have like brand, you know, brand awareness in your market. But then two, it's like on the back end of that, you're thinking long-term on these relationships because as you're out there collecting data and creating relationships and letting people know who you are, what you do, and you're here to help, those people may or may not want to buy or sell today. Some of them will, some of them won't. So you help the ones that do, you collect all their data, right? Regardless regardless. And um, that's long-term thinking is to, is to actually spend time with people who aren't ready to buy or sell today to create that bond for later. Because the thing is, is that person is going to buy or sell eight properties over the next 20 years. Right. You know, they're going to do like eight deals over the next 20 years and refer like 11 people to somebody, you know, and like, so those 20 deals is what I see when I'm talking to somebody who isn't ready to buy or sell today. You know what I mean? And that's where building the relationship combined with thinking about the long long-term, but then also capitalizing short-term because you run into people that need to buy or sell today and they love how you operate and want to do business with you because you didn't try to high pressure them. You actually listen to why they're trying to do something, you know, and then they're like, wow, this person really cares. That's my real estate agent. Let's do a deal today because I'm ready to do something right now, you know, so you win today and you win even bigger tomorrow at the same time. Same swoop of a, of a pin, same action. You're in the same motion, but you're capitalizing short and long term at the same time. It's beautiful. Boom. Everything you do should have dual purpose, which means every action you take should have more than one possible outcome. Let's say you have a listing in a, in a subdivision. You're like, I want to call all the property owners in that subdivision. And so you're calling all the prop property owners in that subdivision to let them know about that listing. Most agents are so focused on the objective of that call session to be to try to sell that listing or to try to get the word out about that listing. When I'm thinking, yeah, I can get the word out about the listing, but I can also create more relationships that might want to do other deals in the future. And so people get through at the call session and they're like, man, I didn't sell that listing today. And I'm like, but you created five new relationships that of people that are going to do 20 deals with you over the next 20 years. You know what I mean? So there's always a backup plan. It's kind of like a buyer, right? So we all have buyers that are missing out on properties, right? There's 15 buyers for every listing and you have buyers that wrote offers and you know, you lost some bids. And so you're like, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call that subdivision they want to live in. And so you call the subdivision. You call the subdivision and you're like, at the end of the call session, a lot of people are like, man, gosh darn it. I didn't get a, I didn't find my buyer or anything. And I'm like, but you found five people that will do 20. You just did a hundred deals over the next 20 years out of the relationships you initiated during that call session. You know? So it's like, yeah, I'm trying to find my buyer a house, but also let's create relationships in the process where it puts you in a position, bro, where you can't lose. It's a win-win situation for you every single time. Why? because you have dual purpose. There's dual purpose in every little action you take. And then it's just like, you don't care if this outcome you're chasing actually works out or not. You got all these backup reasons why you're doing this. That's how that's how I operate. That's like right now, okay? Like uh, I talk to agents and help them without asking anything at all in return at whatsoever. It doesn't matter to me because here, listen to this. Maybe they join the coaching program and maybe they do this and do that, right? But maybe they don't do anything thing. Maybe they join the team. Maybe they do this. Maybe something happens in there. But if they don't, that's okay. You know why? Because they know that I genuinely cared about them to help them. And they're like, wow, Ricky really stepped up to help me. Didn't ask for anything. I'm going to tell everybody about him. And we're definitely, we're going to take a caravan. We're going to get a Greyhound bus full of agents, like four of them to go to his next event. You know what I mean? 
that's how the world works, man. Dual purpose. Wow, that's powerful. Your prospecting hours from when you first started years, I don't know, maybe one to three until now, you know, what's changed? Has anything changed? At this point with social media and everything, I'm looking at everybody make calls between nine and 12 and do their marketing after lunch for the rest of the day, right? That's me, that's me. Now, back in the day when there was no social media, right? There was no social media. I'm sitting here dialing with my hand, making calls eight hours a day. I'm dialing with my hand eight hours a day, not even making half the calls you guys make in, in two hours using a dialer, you know? And you got the whole day ahead. You've done twice as much work as I used to do in a whole day and you got the whole day ahead of yourself to go do other crazy technological things, right? And everybody, and like everybody's sitting around saying, how do I succeed? What do I do? <laughs> I mean, open up your eyes and get to work. There's plenty of stuff to do. You know, I've typically always been a buyer's agent. So I guess my question is, I had a lot of agents call me as far as, you know, letting me know we're gonna put in an offer, how can we make this attractive? And I mean, it got to a point where I felt, you know, I can only tell them so much, you know, we'll just put it in writing and we'll look at it. So mm. how do you service your seller to the max mm. without losing opportunity, I guess? See, the thing is, is we have to abide by a little thing called the code of ethics through our local board of realtors, right? This is NAR. This is the code of ethics, right? When, and we are representing our seller. So it wouldn't do our seller any justice. We have a fiduciary responsibility to our sellers not to disclose anything about their motivation, anything about any other offers that are in play that might jeopardize uh, what another buyer may or may not offer for that property. Whereas if they know what one offer, one offer is, they may offer less than what they would have offered if they didn't know what that offer was and so on and so forth. So, I mean, you, you have to protect that information to best serve your seller. So that's like first and foremost, when these agents are trying to hit you up and do all this crazy stuff, listen, don't talk to them. Don't talk to them. You know, say, listen, we're looking at offers. Send us your best offer, right? Send us your offer. Don't talk to me about an offer. I don't want to hear nothing about an offer. I don't want you to tell me about an offer. I don't even want you to email me what an offer might be. I want you to email me a contract and let me present it to my seller. Okay. And then we'll counter back in writing, you know, we'll decline the offer or we'll counter back. We'll do the same thing. We will put something on because until it's on a piece of paper and everybody has signed that document, there's no reason to even talk about it. Okay. Period. Listen, here, here's the fact of the matter, guys. I'll drop a few nuggets on you right here. As much as you think you know what your client is going to do, you have no earthly clue what they're going to do. Recent example, an agent in my office, he he had a he had a, a, a pocket listing of a condo and the seller said he's not listing it. He will sell it. He will not, I repeat, not take less than, than 475. Not take less than 475. Period. End of story.